It was an early morning fishing trip gone wrong that saw Dan Bergquist and his three companions, one a non-swimmer, tipped into the water and in need of help. It went down pretty quick. I think we had about two minutes to get the jackets on and get overboard. The men floundered in the water until local fishermen came to their aid and raised the alarm with the Coast Guard. The launch Sabre was there within minutes. The Australian Volunteer Coast Guard headquarters at Lemon Tree Passage perches on a hill watching over and listening to the airwaves of Port Stephens in the mile. Staffed by volunteers, it averages more than 200 calls a day for information or assistance, from tide and weather checks to arrivals and departures of pleasure craft. Operators lend their knowledge to boaters in unfamiliar waters and are on call as lifesavers when the need arises. It's great to know that there are people like that around, with the equipment, with the proper gear and the expertise to help if you are in trouble. Christine Berry is proud to be known as the Donkey Lady. For 12 years, a breeder of stud Jackson Jennies, as donkeys are known, she's appalled by the neglect of some people towards their animals. Each week, she receives cases like this six-month-old foal left to starve to death in a barren paddock. The condition of this donkey is typical of what I have to, to deal with. He's emaciated, he's uh, depressed, he's lice-infested, he's parasite-ridden. Christine estimates she spends $100 a week out of her own pocket on caring for the 40 animals she's inherited. Feed, maintenance and vet bills aren't cheap, but in Christine's eyes it's an expense she can't afford to neglect. Other donkey breeders have helped out, taking on at least another 60 animals onto their properties, and the RSPCA has paid some bills. The donkey sanctuary at Glen Oak near Seam is in effect a hospital for sick animals. But Christine Berry is calling for some preventative medicine from owners who should learn to care for their stock. I feel a bit sorry for people who can't cope with their animals, um, but I feel a bit angry with those who don't ask for help in the early stages because it's here and it's, it's Australia-wide, not just here in the Hunter. For anyone with a real spring in their step, the Jumpers Jamboree is the place to be. Each year it offers Australia's high-flying future champions the chance to train with qualified coaches, something not always possible in their home states. Coaching interest has grown, but uh, the talent itself is... Uh, I think everybody's been too busy to think about the coaches, and that's something that's going to be done this year, in our state at any rate. That's not a problem here though. Three-time world champion Brett Austin knows what it takes to reach the top and says this group has plenty of potential stars. We've probably got about the top four or five who will go on and represent Australia in open company. And that means the uh, top four men, top four women in Australia. So, you know, five out of a potential eight is, is very good. Trampolining is expected to become an official Olympic sport in 1996. When that happens, its popularity should go through the roof. The South Stain left Sydney this morning on the final leg of her journey to Newcastle where she'll tie up at Merriweather Wharf to become a harbourside cabaret restaurant. The South Stain left Melbourne on Monday, much to the regret of Victorians who had hoped to keep the former Manly Ferry in Melbourne. She was bought by a Newcastle consortium headed by local entrepreneur Brian McDermott who was on board as the steam ferry made its way from Sydney. Steaming at about seven knots, the ferry is travelling at half the top speed that made her famous throughout the British Empire when she was launched at Leith Scott in 1938 as the fastest ferry in the world. The 72-metre vessel is capable of seating 500 people to dinner in a number of function rooms, all restored in original Art Deco design.
the 53-year-old ferry looked none the worse after a voyage from Melbourne. It was all work today for the crew of 36 who were polishing and cleaning the South Stain back into ship shape. The $13 million vessel once carried 1,700 passengers, but now she's more famous for her elegant stairway and cabins. The triple stage steam engine, however, can still pull its way, topping speeds of 10 knots. The South Stain will be based in Newcastle Harbour as a floating restaurant. Local steam lovers can have a close look from 10 tomorrow morning. She was known as the Queen of the Sydney Harbour Ferries and 50 years on still commands interest. 1,700 people boarded in the space of an hour this morning, recording a rush equal to any the ship saw in its 36-year service on the circular quay to Manly Run. An estimated 40 million people rode the ferry during those years. Some were back to tread the decks, their recollections ranging from the romantic to the everyday crossings to work and back. We enjoyed the trip. And those days, of course, were a lot younger and enjoyed a lot better, you know. Yes, how many years ago? Well, about 40 years, years ago. <laughs> the ship's engine room is a time vault, a labyrinth of steam-driven cylinders and boilers. It's familiar territory to Guy Griffiths. He was an apprentice working on the engine when the ship was built. He's since signed on to oversee its historical preservation. The hull was built in Scotland, in Leith, and the engine was built in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And the Irish and the Scotch always got on well together. The friendship lasted and so did this one. A common enemy facing the military forces in the Gulf is the desert itself. Its constant assault on machinery, engines and aircraft can stop armies in their tracks without a shot being fired. Rough terrain and sandy wastes gouge under inflated tyres and choke engines operating far from service bays. The compressor was developed by the Moody family of Newcastle with off-road and recreational vehicles in mind. But now the British and American armies are looking at it with deadly seriousness. The compressor is belt driven off a vehicle's motor. Over there um, we're able to use it for three basic things, cleaning of motors, greasing of machinery and deflation of tyres and inflation of tyres. The design has been bought by an American company. Terry Kirk from Newcastle is promoting the compressor in the explosive climate of Saudi Arabia. Most definitely one of the best things that could happen to us. The first shipment of the product is on its way to the Gulf and while discussions for a peaceful solution to the conflict continue to break down, the compressor could help ensure the military machine won't. Police and representatives of the heavy transport industry were together again today to hand over the first tangible sign of their new spirit of cooperation. Have a chat was conducted in December in an attempt to foster better understanding between police and truckies and defuse their head-on confrontations on the highways. The word is spreading.
And it's very difficult on the road uh, for both sides to do their job and I think perhaps uh, just to talk to each other on a more agreeable basis uh, was helpful. We're in the business of reducing road trauma, they're in the business of moving freight and therefore I feel that we have to get together. There's got to be a, a common working relationship between the police and the heavy vehicle industry. The Angel One Rescue Helicopter Appeal benefited from donations of more than $1,500. The $2 million aircraft relies on public support to keep it flying. Since it went into service in July, the chopper has flown 300 missions. If we don't have uh, ongoing support from groups such as this, we, uh, we simply can't operate. So it's very, very important to us to receive that ongoing funding. Newcastle Stuart Deering has achieved a similar feat to his father, representing his country as a hockey goalkeeper. Stuart first made the national squad in January of last year and with the Australian team was successful in two overseas tournaments, one in Ireland and another in Holland. On his return to the land of Oz, Stuart played against Korea in Melbourne and then at the opening of the new hockey complex at Broadmeadow, Stuart helped Australia defeat Great Britain in the test match. He also was instrumental in Western Suburbs' great Newcastle grand final victory, saving two crucial shots in the penalty shootout. Vicky Roycroft from Mount White on the Central Coast is a former winner of the NBN St George Sports Star of the Year and again comes into contention with the stunning performance at the World Championships in Stockholm during July. Riding Mickey Mouse, Vicky was placed 10th overall in the show jumping section, being the highest placed woman in the event and becoming the highest ever placed Australian in the world titles. Vicky has automatically qualified for the Barcelona Olympics with her efforts in Stockholm. Todd Wilshere from Kiliburn Bay is another who has had a tremendous year on the international circuit. Todd was runner-up in the Overseas Champions Race and the World Best Pairs event. He was the highest point scorer for Group B in their World Cup win in Hungary and then he rode brilliantly to run third in the World Solo Final, missing a ride off a first by a single point. Todd was also named the British League Rider of the Year. The telecast of the MBN St George Building Society Sports Star of the Year is this Saturday evening at 9.30. Fire brigades were hard pressed by a number of bushfires burning near the city when they were called to a huge blaze sweeping through derelict buildings on Hunter Street on December 23. The flames were fanned by a gusting westerly and quickly destroyed the buildings despite valiant efforts by dozens of firefighters. A vehicle parked nearby was also heat scorched. Early today, brigades went to an unoccupied house alight on Union Street, Wickham. The fire was reported at about 1am and was extinguished by two pumpers. The interior of the dwelling was gutted. A neighbouring house, also derelict, was blackened. Mayfield detectives later questioned a 32-year-old man of no fixed abode who'd allegedly been staying in the building. He appeared in Newcastle court on four counts of maliciously setting fire to property. The matter was stood over until January 22nd. An estimated 8,000 students will be looking for homes in the area this year. Just over half of them will be placed. The rest will commute from as far as Sydney, the Central Coast and country areas. Others will be forced to defer their studies. The university's accommodation officer, Kath Dacey, has been finding homes for students for the past 15 years and expects first year students to be worst off when courses commence in February. It's first time away from home, a lot of those kids come down from the country areas so they don't know Newcastle. Mums and dads are very concerned that they get in somewhere safe and comfortable. The university has closed the book on its own housing vacancies and is conducting interviews to place a lucky few already on the list. I'm fairly confident I'll find something sooner or later. The cost of rental accommodation is at a premium with some landlords cashing in on students' difficulties. The landlord will turn around at the end of six months and say I'm putting the rent up by X amount of dollars if you can't afford to pay it well bye bye and we'll find somebody else because there's lots of people available for. Overseas students are assured of finding accommodation. Their higher fee structures make them more attractive to the university. A year round pool of rental accommodation has been set up to cater for their needs. The Student Association has its eye on unused hospital buildings in the city which it says could be used for budget accommodation. 
A group of Sydney University architecture students converted an old warehouse. And did all the applications to the government through the local government and community housing program. They did all the designs, worked on the, uh, the whole process completely and are now in March will be moving into the uh, warehouse. For now, local students are relying on an annual plea. If you have a room available, please uh, contact uh, Kath Dacey, the accommodation officer, officer at the university, and uh, offer the room to them, please. The Salvation Army Memorial Service was held appropriately in the SOS Centre on Wharf Road, which served as one of the focal points in Trinity Parker's short life. Her mother and other relatives and many of her friends were present to remember a young girl who they readily admit was in trouble as much as she was out of it. Some chose a musical tribute. Trinity died after apparently attempting to hang herself while in custody at Maitland Police Station last weekend. It's alleged she was intoxicated. There will be a coronial inquiry into the 15-year-old's death to be held several months from now in Sydney. Salvation Army Major Stan Hindle says he'll be using his submission to the coroner to highlight the concern he has about street kids who get easy access to drugs, especially alcohol. It's not unusual for in the case of young Trinity to be involved with either alcohol, uh, prescription drugs or, or something else, uh, other drugs, uh, in one week. And uh, sometime in, in, in a week she would be involved with one or the other. Trinity's uncle, Doug Clements, is a chaplain and counsellor with the Newcastle City Mission. He too said Trinity's death should draw attention to a wider community concern. The question I would want to ask is, are we prepared to allow our community to be one that's driven by alcohol? Uh, young people's lives are basically dominated by alcohol, uh, particularly when it comes to 1am uh, and 3am closing. It seems to me that uh, the qu fundamental question for the community is, do we want our society to be one whose purposes and meaning is found in the consumption of alcohol? Knights Chief Executive Mike Armstrong was back from the selections in Sydney today with three new players for the fold. Leading the list is Jason Hoogerworth, formerly of St George's reserve grade side, but with some strong showings in the first grade as well. When we found out Jason was coming back to Newcastle, being an old Hunter Valley boy, we thought it would be a handy acquisition to our playing stock. While Hoogerworth has a contract, President's Cup standout Paul Hughes, also from St George, and Bill Dart from East First Grade, are signed on on a payment per match basis and will need to make every game a winner for their places in the side. The new players have entered under the Knights' reduced salary cap for the year, but many big names holding out for the big pay, such as Ron Gibbs, Steve Morris and Steve Lenane, have been left out in the cold. You'll find that uh, the, the, the prices might come down a bit as, uh, as we get further towards the start of the season. The Knights camp now goes into intensive pre-season selections with a 20-man squad headed to Mount Isa for the long weekend and official trials getting underway at the ISC in early February. While some team members are carrying lagging injuries, there shouldn't be any major reshuffle before the first round of the Winfield Cup home clash against Cronulla in March. Paul Harrigan, David Mullane's shoulder, Tony Butterfield's knee, just to mention a couple. Now, a lot of those are uh, the result of off-season surgery, which was required, and it, it will delay their, their starting uh, point uh, with, with us this year, but uh, hopefully they'll be there within the first three or four rounds. Completely just.
disorientated and won't know where she is. So, that's the stool on the corner of... Uh, When the Hunter's Army Reserver staged their biggest peacetime exercise in 1988, it was no surprise they chose the defence of the region's power stations as a realistic scenario in which they could be involved. A team of security experts headed by senior police today toured the power stations for informal discussions on potential threats. While they realise they are an obvious target, Police Inspector Bryson Potter was anxious to downplay the possibility of terrorism. We treat the uh, level of threat and respect to this particular matter uh, very low at this stage and the reason we made the trip today of course was to renew uh, old acquaintances, uh, establish new telephone numbers for contact points for staff at those locations and uh, in view of the crisis and the uh, likelihood of any natural disaster occurring there, now seems an appropriate time to do it. Elsewhere, the Hunter District Water Board is increasing surveillance of its reservoirs, once again, just in case. Careful monitoring of water quality will continue as usual. And closer to the city, the big oil company depots at Wickham have put on extra security staff. Management is understandably reluctant to give details. For those who think the security precautions are a little paranoid, it's worth bearing in mind that Australia has already been the victim of two terrorist attacks allegedly sponsored by Iraq. Those responsible for the bombing of the Israeli consulate at the Westgate Centre in Sydney and the Harkoa Club at Bondi in December 1984 were never brought to justice and it's possible they are still in this country. Tom Hilston, NBN News. Police allege the woman's Toyota Corolla veered into the path of oncoming traffic just before six tonight. A southbound semi-trailer swerved to miss her, but the car went under the rear bogey of the trailer, crushing the front driver's side of the vehicle. The woman was killed on impact. The driver of the semi suffered only shock. The crash is the first fatal car accident in the Hunter for 1991. Statement by the President of the United States. The liberation of Kuwait has begun. In conjunction with the forces of our coalition partners, the United States has moved under the code name Operation Desert Storm to enforce the mandates of the United Nations Security Council. As of 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Operation Desert Storm forces were engaging targets in Kuwait and Iraq. President Bush will address the nation at 9 o'clock p.m. tonight from the Oval Office. I'll try to get you more as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you.